Number 40. If a sample of iron and a sample of zinc come into contact, the zinc corrodes, but the iron does not. If a sample of iron comes into contact with a sample of copper, the iron corrodes, but the copper does not. Explain this phenomenon. Okay, so let's take it one step at a time. We first want to identify when iron and zinc are coming together, the zinc is corroding. Now, when we talk about corrosion, we're talking about redox reactions, and corrosions always occur because of oxidation. So whoever is corroding, or whoever is you know undergoing corrosion, is always the one that is oxidizing. And oxidizing always comes from the anode in a spontaneous reaction. So for the first thing, they're saying that we have a sample of iron and zinc. So here's my, we'll say, sample number one. And we have iron, which is Fe, and zinc, which is Zn. Now, we could only basically answer this question by knowing the half reactions. Now, they didn't say specifically what state uh, iron, zinc, and copper was. So I'm going to assume that we're, we're having an even playing field, and all of these have a plus 2 charge. So now, let's just take their E values, right? The Fe has a E value, a cell potential of negative 0.447, and the Zn has a cell potential of negative 0.7618. And once again, I found these in the back of the textbook in an appendix value. So now, the thing here is that which one is going to corrode? Well, generally speaking, Remember that the lower number you have from your standard half reaction values, the more likely it's going to oxidize. Oxide, <laughs> oxidize, or undergo oxidation. And oxidation is where the corrosion happens. So the key here is that you want to see which one is the lower amount. Well, out of the iron and the zinc, negative 0.7618 volts is lower than negative 0.447. So when these two come together and it's spontaneous, the higher number of the two is always going under reduction, and the lower number of the two is always going under oxidation. That's how you make a spontaneous reaction. Oxidation, and since we said that corrosion happens at the oxidation, we know that the zinc is going to corrode. And that's what it said here. The zinc is going to corrode, but the iron does not. So now let's just do sample two in the same exact manner. And in this case, we have now iron coming in contact with copper. So we have our Fe and now our Cu. So we already know our cell potential for the iron, negative 0.447. And now the copper one is a positive 0.34 volts. So the lower one is going to be oxidation, the higher one is going to be reduction. In this case, the iron now, since it's lower, is going to be oxidation, and the copper is going to be reduction. So this one is now undergoing oxidation, and because it's undergoing oxidation, it is going to corrode. And let's see, did that say it here? The iron corrodes, but the copper does not. And that's what we got. So just know that the general idea is that the lower the value you have on your half reactions for a spontaneous reaction, you're going to be the oxidizer. And that's the corroding one, because that's at the anode. And there you go. So this basically will sum up this phenomenon. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Keep studying hard. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. And I will see you all, well, I'll talk to you all in later lessons. Okay, bye-bye.